Hello everyone, it's, it's just so good to be back and to be with you all. I've been away uh, on mission, in some mission trips, so it's been lovely to be away, but good to be back and to be with you. And I've just had time to reflect. Uh, I was sharing on Sunday, my sermon on Sunday at Fontana was from Luke, from Ephesians chapter 6, where Paul says, put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. And from there, I, I went to Luke chapter 9, verse 1, where Jesus said to his disciples, I give you authority over every disease and over all unclean spirits. So Jesus gave us authority over every kind or sort of unclean spirit, and by that also over Satan, he gave us authority. Now that was in Luke chapter 9. In Luke chapter 10, he sends his 72 disciples out with the command to go out and he gives them the instructions where they must go two by two. And when they returned from their first mission trip, they were so excited and they said, Lord, even the demons are subject to us. And Jesus said, don't rejoice in that, rejoice that your names are written in the book. But the principle was that his promise that they had authority was verified by saying the demons are subject to us. And he goes on in Luke, in Luke chapter 11. Now Jesus explains a little bit about this thing of demons. And, and I don't want to get into that, but I want to just read this piece of scripture from Luke chapter 11. Jesus says to them, when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept, clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go on, go in and live there, and the final condition of that person is worse than the first condition of that person. What Jesus is saying here is that when you drive the demon out of people, or when you drive this evil away, and we have authority over it, we rebuke the spirit, we rebuke the fear, we rebuke the temptation, we rebuke these things that the devil brings against us in the terms of lies and deception. When we do that, that spirit leaves, but it comes back again to see what you've done about it. And we see this principle in a couple of instances, just two of them today in John chapter 8, with the woman caught in adultery when the, the Pharisees and the, the, the teachers, they wanted to trap Jesus by saying, this woman was caught in adultery, we must stone her. And he wrote in the sand and eventually said to them, whoever is without sin, throw the first stone and they left. And he said to her, go and stop sinning. There was a principle, stop doing what you have been doing. You've, it's brought you into this position. In John chapter five, he heals the man at the pool of Bethesda. And this man had been there for 30 odd years, complaining he can't get to the water when the angel stirs. And Jesus says to him, do you want to get well? Then get up, take up your mat and walk. And it says the man left and started talking. Jesus found him later and he says to him, he says, stop sinning or something worse is going to happen to you. Stop sinning or something worse. And so today I want to leave you with that thought in our own lives when we ask God to help us. We, we, feel, we feel the spirit attack. Satan is lying to us. Remember that he can't get into you. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. He can't read your mind. Remember those things. But at the same time, he can put things there and he can bring lies and temptation to you. When you rebuke that spirit, ons bestraf thy gees, ons bestraf thy fries, ons bestraf thy... We, we rebuke that spirit of pornography. We rebuke that spirit of alcohol. When we do it, remember it will leave because he said, I gave you authority of it, but it will wander through dry and arid places. And then it will come back and see, have you swept your house clean and you haven't filled it with anything? And it says it will go out and find seven worse demons and come back. And then the state, your state or that person's state will be worse than it was when there was just the one demon. So I leave that thought with you today in today's short devotion. Think very carefully that when we do, when we help people to get rid of something and they, and they fight the temptation and it leaves, help them to build that life around the Word of God, bringing the Spirit into their lives and a prayer life, fill that life with something so that when the demon comes back, as he came back to Jesus, time and time again in the wilderness, he tried to get at him. It was closed, it was filled with the Spirit of God saying, it is written. So I leave that thought with you. Don't leave the house swept and clean and empty. Never do that. Fill it with the presence and the power of the living God. And that demon will not be able to come back and tempt you or bring any accusation against you again. So just following on the sermon from Sunday, do that in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you that your word is precious today. And you tell us in this book of Luke, your, your disciple, he tells us that, that you gave us authority, Lord Jesus, over every unclean spirit. You gave us power over them. You conquered them on the cross. Where Satan had had so much power throughout the Old Testament, you defeated him on the cross. 
But he is still here. You've allowed him to exist for, for that time until you will deal with him in the end. But you've given us authority in this time to deal with him and you've given us power over him. And so, Lord, I pray for all of us who have been weak at times. I know I've been weak at times and felt I'm being tempted. And the attack is very severe. Even on our town at the moment, the attack is severe of Petra Tief, Lord. We know that we must fill it. If we fill that temple, Lord, with your presence, with, him, with Satan's lies and his temptations, we'll not be able to make a dent against that. And so I pray for those that, like the man at the, at the pool of Bethesda, like the woman found in adultery and forgiven by the Lord, he says, go and sin no more. Stop doing, stop sitting in front of the pornographic channel. Stop going back to the pub. Stop going back to look at those things. Stop going back to those magazines. Stop going back to the, the dirty video. Stop doing those things and fill that thing. Whatsoever things are lovely and pure, think on those things and fill yourself, fill your life, your heart, your mind, your thoughts with the very presence of God, with His Word, and in prayer, fill it with the presence of God. So, Lord, bless us. We pray, I pray for your blessing upon each and every person of our family, of our families, of our congregation of Fontana, and all those that might, might be listening in today by live streaming. God bless you, and the Lord protect you. In Jesus' name. Amen.